the letter A. The songs move too quickly. <laughs> the letter Q. Okay. Are they all the letters in the alphabet? Maybe. Is there a way to find out on the Jim Jeffrey show? Uh, no, no. I don't know. That was my worst one. Because the song did a different thing. It was a no. new thing. No, no. Was, that, was that a sneaky message from Q or something? Yeah, no, uh, look, Q's there. <laughs> <laughs> what he does is he tries to help us out. Uh-huh. If you don't want to be fucking helped out, you want you want <laughs> babies to have their adrenal glands eaten, then shame on you. Shame on you. Now, sure, Q hasn't come through with any of his things that said would happen. Right. <laughs> there was going to be a big, all oh, that were going to be arrested one day, and that day came and went, and they went, oh, okay, well, we have to have a... I wonder who was the person who invented Q, who was just sitting there going, and whether they're sitting at home going, you just got a bit out of hand. <laughs> just having a bit of a laugh on the internet. That's what I hope it is, not just a crazy person on the other side. <laughs> what, do you think Q's real? No, but it could be a guy who thinks he's actually predicting stuff. We did a thing on conspiracy theories. And we I interviewed some people on the Jim Jeffrey show about about Q, and um, somebody wrote to me recently and went, "I've just lost all respect for you. Don't you understand that Q's trying to save the world?" <laughs> like I was just trying to let it melt to the fucking ground because I wasn't queuing up. That's when they lost respect for you, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're just like, oh, I've had it with this person. <laughs> Up till now, I was right on board with everything you said. <laughs> and then you don't trust the cue. Yeah, what do we got for us this week, uh, Jack? Comment World. Comment like World, it's Comment World. Jack, don't proofread in Comment World. Comment World, insults are hurled, whether at Forrest or that other girl. And Jim will shit on you if you're getting to me. Let's all play nice, let's keep it PC. Comment World. Comment world, five stars only in comment world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they figured out our system. <laughs> <laughs> that song was made by Kyle Mocha, spelled M O U C H A. You can go check out his YouTube channel. Kyle Kyle Mocha won't shut up. Uh, yeah, well, he makes other music. Kyle Mocha. Yeah. I I ordered a Kyle Mo- yeah. Mocha the other day. Yeah, grande. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna start us off with some compliments to make us feel good. Mm-hmm. First one, uh, it's with music signs. Uh, it's just- music signs? You mean inverted commas? Do you call them music signs? No. Oh, the, you mean uh, like notes? Music notes. The music uh, half notes? notes. Half notes. Half uh, notes. Oh. But they're emojis. Oh, so you meant to sing this comment? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The best part of waking up, Jim Jeffries in your cup. It's from Folgers. Yep. The Folgers end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the cup. And that was that. <laughs> Jeez, I guess they watch it in the morning. Yeah. That was that was your comment that you, you found. Okay. Well, it's a nice one. <laughs> yeah, it is a nice one. Yeah, yeah. Best part of waking up is Jim's left your house with a small <laughs> note. Uh one person says, most other podcasts get a bit hacky or samey samey after listening week in, week out. But this format keeps it fresh. Keeps it fresh, different topic all Put the time. It in the cup. And you know what's good about the podcast for you? I'm speaking to the people who aren't listening. You know what's wrong with you? You're not listening. <laughs> Listen to the podcast. Do you want to know why? Because it's a different topic each week. You know what's good about that? <laughs> we'll never run out of topics. They might get weaker and weaker as we get along. As you get into like year seven. And they're going to get oddly more specific. We're going oh, yeah, <laughs> like, to have to do it. When, when we're in year 10 and we're just like this. Oh, yeah, I guess there, there, were, there wasn't always doorknobs, was there? <laughs> <laughs> they, used to, they used to just push doors, didn't they? <laughs> There weren't even doors. <laughs> yeah. um, this is a five-star review. Um, starts off, I love this. Nearly every episode, I end up buying a new book. Not going to lie, I have a low-key crush on Aaron Brockovich now. Jim, I can't wait to see you again on your next tour. I have a bit of crush on Aaron as well. <laughs> yeah, I, came up, yeah. I have a bit of thing. She's my uh, grandmother of choice, Aaron Brockovich. I don't mean that. What about nasty Heidi, way. though? You liked Heidi, Sounds too. Like it. Oh, Heidi was sexy as well. Oh, <laughs> Heidi, what to expect when you're expecting? Yeah, she was a, she's a, oh, there's a lot of grandmothers I'm into now. <laughs> I don't know if they like they call, being called grandmothers. But, uh, what do you mean? What do you mean to call them? They, they, women? They are grandma. Yeah, They're I know. Grandmothers. I feel like that's the... It's a category I hadn't gone into. Yeah. I feel like, though, once you're a grandma, but you're still super hot. You like being called grandma oh, because think, then it makes you feel hotter. I think hotter. they like to say yeah. it to people, I'm a grandma. Yeah. And they're just like, what? People are like, what? what the you? fuck? <laughs> I thought you were 20. 
Yeah. yeah, what the fuck? And then they proudly say, oh, I had a kid at 12 and my kid had a kid at 12. <laughs> Boom. Do the maths. <laughs> Uh, it continues. Kelly, your cheekbones are on point. Mm-hmm. Forrest, you fox. Why are you hiding that sexy hair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, same reason I hide my hair. It doesn't look. It doesn't look good with air, um, yeah, earphones with on top. When you put the headphones in front, it pushes all around, and it's, it's not. It's not a good thing. Yeah. And then Although they- I gotta say, Luis's hair. He's been doing the blonde tints, and he's got a little tuft coming out the front at the moment, which is very alluring. <laughs> He does. Just, just look at him. He just looks like if you were to paint someone, you'd be like, he's a rascal with a heart of gold. <laughs> he is. And then it ends with, Jack, you're the best part of the show. Thank you. Uh, well, sounds like you wrote that comment. Thank you. Um, by the way, uh, thank you for buying our guest books because yeah. we always do like to promote our guests. So if you do buy stuff from them, that, that makes it uh, nice for them, you know, for them coming on the show. And then also uh, buy, our, you know, the stuff from our ads, but also subscribe to our... Um, Tell your friends. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Tell, Tell your, your friends, friends if you like the podcast. The Share podcast, our, our, rating, our ratings are going up. But I'm going to be honest with you. We want them higher, but and if we do get higher, when COVID's out, if they get to a certain number, I know the number in my head I need them to get to, and we're not far off, we'll start doing live shows of the podcast. We'll come to a town near you, we'll do a podcast where we'll have a specialist sitting on stage with us when COVID's over. Mm-hmm. Film 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we, uh, yeah, please tell your Door friends. Doorknobs, you say. Doorknobs. <laughs> <laughs> tell your friends. Window treatments. <laughs> uh, and also our Instagram, IDCat. What is it? ID Cat Podcast. I never remember the handle for Instagram. <laughs> ID Cat Podcasts. <laughs> and if you really like it, there's Patreon. So. Yeah, patreon.com slash ID Cat. Can you listen to the Patreon thing? Do people listen to that? Yeah. All right. Good for them. <laughs> <laughs> um, as with all compliments, there are some suggestions we receive. Mm. Um, I'm going to read this one exactly how Lou Bob wrote it. Uh, Jim Jeffrey, do something interesting like put on a f- Fighter pi- fighter jet pilot on the show. Stop showing boring stuff. Yeah, we should. Well, I, 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 my, my son's, my son, my nephew is about to be like an Apache helicopter pilot or some shit. He's, he's learning how to do that. And so we'll have him on. He'll go, yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, it goes up <laughs> and it go, comes I back down. And I go, so what happens if you fly? He goes, yeah, you bloody, you fly it around, shoot a few things. It's like, there's a thing about these things where you go, when you go do something interesting like a fighter jet pilot, you're not going to be sitting in a fighter jet plane. Yeah. That, like yeah. to me, that doesn't seem that doesn't nearly seem as interesting yeah, as like, the things that affect like, my life like, daily. Like, can this guy's gonna be sitting at home going, "Mock what, <laughs> Woo, baby?" <laughs> we'll just have sound effects. Forrest, Forrest, I'm gonna have to bail out. <laughs> oh, I just spat on my microphone. Got a bogey at twelve o'clock. <laughs> no, <laughs> goose. There you go. <laughs> that, must have, that guy would have gone. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was that, right. That was your podcast. <laughs> uh, this relates back to what we said in another podcast. Uh, there actually is another country where Coca Cola is outsold. It's Peru, and the number one there is Inca called Cola. Inca, Inca Cola. Inca Cola. Inca Cola. <laughs> it's got an amazing bubble gum slash lemon grassy flavor, and I'm sure it's easily found in L.A. Yeah. I guess they felt it was all right to name their cola after the Inca, since they're all dead. That's what I always think. Whenever I'm eating Thai food and they've got a lot of lemongrass, I go, this is missing something. <laughs> Bubble gum. <laughs> got a lovely, when did you ever say this? It's got a lovely bubblegum lemongrass flavor. I like it. I, there's a Peruvian restaurant I eat at that I always get an Inca Cola there. It's Peruvian food. It's very good. Shout out. All right. Uh, this is another Forrest for is a Edit bit of an ad, bit of an ads man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> food, very good. <laughs> I put it in my top ten foods. <laughs> I will now list them. Starting at ten, Peruvian. <laughs> nah, it's higher. Right. What, what's your number one? What's your number one food, Forrest? What's your number one when you go? Okay, your all time cuisine. Can't just be like hamburgers. Cuisine. Um, it's either either Mexican or Japanese. I'm not sure. Yeah, Japanese is really kind of. Oh, Thai. Thai is a big there. one. Thai is a big one. Italian? No, Italian's not. Italian's up there. I for like me. Italian, but it's probably like six, seven down there. Eight. I like it, but I'm like, I don't think about it all the time. I think about, I think about, I think, 
I think about tacos and sushi a lot. That's yeah, what I, I love think tacos. about. He does think about sushi a lot. Sometimes when you see Forrest uh, sleeping and he's twitching a little bit, he's dreaming of sushi. <laughs> yeah. you, he's just like, <sighs> raw, raw fish. <sighs> He's, uh, I go, he's dreaming again. Let him rest. <laughs> <laughs> this is another review we got, but there aren't any stars, so they didn't rate us yet from yeah. Plaid Nation. Right. Read Disney. I write Disney fan fiction, so I'm writing this before listening to it, just preparing for the possibility that you all suck. How does he know this episode's coming? No, it's already out. That's, That's the Disney out. episode. He's read the they title. Like, responded. Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah. But why write a, write a review that's not a review before you... And he writes Disney fan fiction. He writes Disney fan fiction. <laughs> or she. Is this stuff where where it's like, and then Ariel started going down on yeah. Jasmine? Is yeah. it that yeah, type yeah, of yeah. stuff? Probably it's going to be some shit I'm going to have to read on the yeah. Patreon. Yeah, 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 do that. Send that in. Ooh, Send in that's some good. Disney yeah. porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Disney fan fiction. And then the beast fucked Ariel's porthole. I assume she had a porthole. <laughs> um, someone a said, whole new hole. <laughs> Someone said Kelly is by far the smartest person in this group. Yeah, I agree with that. I oh, agree I that, don't think that's true at all. I agree that you're, you're the savviest. Forrest is the most educated, and I'm me. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a computer. Yeah, yeah, and I be Jack. And I'm a moron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mega moron. Yeah, yeah. I surprise myself how stupid I am every day. <laughs> Uh, this is a compliment to Forrest. He says, uh, Forrest looking like he paid the toll to get swole, a uh, muscle emoji. Either that or he's wearing his little brother's t-shirt. JK, get it. Got to hustle for your muscle. Okay. Yeah, Thoughts? Right. Eat a lot of food. Yeah, that, guy, <laughs> that guy sounds like a white kid who works at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> who upsets a few different yeah. nationalities along the way by the way he talks. Yeah, he's I know the, type. the Tiger King. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Sydney. He's like Tiger King. Did you see that? Did you see that yeah. was the big thing that that Trump pardoned over a hundred people? Yeah. Trump was just pardoning like friends of his, like yeah. Little like, Wayne. Just like, yeah, I'm gonna pardon. What did Little Wayne get pardoned yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He I... had some new charge, and he yeah. pardoned yeah. yeah, yeah. They just, who, just what's going on? Anyway. He, the Tiger King didn't get pardoned. He yeah, they, he, they had a limo waiting for him. Yeah, his he, friends. Thought, he thought he was ready to go. I don't know why they thought Trump would like the he Tiger King. But like, Carol bashed you and doing as Trump passes me, I'm going to fuck the fucking kill that uh, bitch, Carol <laughs> Baskin. <laughs> fucking Trump. Uh, and, now, and now he's just like, Biden's a good fella, isn't he? Come on, Biden. <laughs> Could use that pardon, pardon me. Pardon me, Biden. Little Wayne has a char had a charge in a gun possession case, but he celebrates his pardon with a new song, "Ain't Got Time." Yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Song. Quick. Um, someone commented, "Empty hope board." Tbh, I laughed up my coffee and then felt sorry for Jack. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah, as it goes. Well, sign Mrs. Hackett. <laughs> <laughs> that was I said I did a joke the other day. There was something that that was, they were filling out a form. I know. Can I say the joke, Jack, about Wendy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was your brother. Your brother was filling out something for Jack, and I was driving along, and he needed to know uh, Jack's mother's oh, yeah. name to fill his form in. And, like, you know when you send a text to someone, you write a joke that's a bit off color, yeah. and then they don't respond? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Because right? he goes, what's Jack's mother's name? And I go, I go, Wendy, at least that was the name she gave me in the morning, right? And that was the big joke, implying that I'd had sex with Jack's mother, and then nothing came back. And I, no, and Scott, I, Scott responds, got it. Yeah, 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 like, yeah thanks, got it. <laughs> it's like, now is not the time for jokes. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm the worst. I, I can guarantee he wasn't offended by that. No, I, I know. I, no, I, wasn't, I, I think there was just... There's just getting the information in, in the to information. get me signed up for yeah, my I had COVID a, I vaccine. I had this plumber come out to, to fix the order system, right? And and so so I he goes, can you text me your address, your name, the type of uh, unit that you're having, the serial number? So I text him all the stuff, and I text him, and then I went, can you text me? Because it came green. You know those idiots that don't have uh, iPhones? Yeah. Those people who have the green text and you never know what happens to the text. Yeah. It yeah. never says delivered and you're like, oh, I don't know. Was it because <laughs> it could was it just a bad number? What's going on yeah, here? Do they, this, yeah, do they block this you? This stupid <laughs> weird text that's gone green. Anyway, so I sent him and it was a green text. And then I went and so I sent a second text. And I go, Can you please text me back to tell me that you've received this? Because it was for the booking, you know, the next day. And the guy texts back this. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't text me back, or you yeah. didn't receive this? Yeah, or you, or you, you can't, text, or this isn't the right number. It turned out it was the wrong number. I was chatting for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the last one for today. This someone tweeted at Forrest going, "You laugh, you lot laughing at Jack and not with him. Frankly, makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. It verges on bullying." Hashtag Team Jack. Thanks, Gretchy. Yeah, her original email went like, "You teasing that loser." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of words redacted here. <laughs> <laughs> People do that. They go. It's verging on bullying. What a lot of rubbish. It's bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Call it what it is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. We're damn happy with it. Guess I haven't been doing it good enough. Yeah. Or she said someone. One person retweeted it. Somebody retweeted it and somebody liked it. I think oh, the same yeah. person. Maybe it was like a week later. So I guess it's good, that hashtag. That'll, got that'll out be there. the best yeah. if the bullying gets significantly worse yeah. because <laughs> of that email. We're like verging on bullying. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something about, about Jack. He's at, at once got a thin skin and too much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, <laughs> Jack. Are we bullying you? I don't know. I don't know. You feel like I'll it. ask you again. Are we bullying you? He can't hear you. His head's in a toilet. <laughs> oh, no, sir. <laughs> Answer right now, yeah. or you're gonna get hey, Jack, the old come knuckle over sandwich. Here and pull that underwear from outside your un a crack. <laughs> <laughs> be, be wedgy yourself and answer me honestly. That's, yeah. Imagine if that's what we did to him when he came in. We yeah. wedgied him. <laughs> I, I, I was. I think I was too young for the wedgie. I think the wedgie became popular in society just about a year after I finished school. It was about 1993 where the wedgie became like a thing, right? Yeah. Sounds then, like a good episode. Yeah. Oh, wedgie. the wedgies. Wedgies. <laughs> if you're if you're a specialist in wedgies, <laughs> if you're like if you can like get us some like 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 maybe a police report where they said you bullied too much. Yeah. yeah. My you, my brother my brother Grant when we lived in Canada got a ton of wedgies. Oh, maybe gonna, was he atomic a, wedgies. Was he too. a jet fighter pilot though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, then we got him. Isn't that was that? <laughs> Wait, did he actually get an atomic wedgie where the underwear got put on his head? Yeah, they would like rip. They would they would pull so hard that it would just rip the underwear. Oh, he he used to like pre rip his underwear before school so that it was easier and then they also at one point tied him to the flagpole they also tied him to a skateboard and sent him down a hill what the fuck yeah canada like was a like movie. a rough couple of years for jesus us. Yeah. where were you living like an hour outside of toronto oh. the canadians yeah the friendly i, I got bullied Earth? so badly That's when i was good ideas can you there. say those again so i can do this to jack <laughs> Last time I bring a skateboard to work. <laughs> okay, we're the friendliest, most polite people in the world. Let's give this fella an atomic wedgie, yeah. eh? No, Not when their hockey teams lose. Gee. I got bullied so like I had a USA ski team jacket. I was a swimmer and I got yeah, it what, for Christmas. Why did you wear that? And you <laughs> I got it for Christmas and it was like a parka. It was a really warm jacket. So for after swim team practice when your hair is wet and all that stuff and I got out of practice and the jacket was just lying in a puddle of water because like th I just got bullied for being American right but do you know that was put in a puddle of water or maybe an ice sculpture was wearing it for a while <laughs> yeah. maybe there was somebody that needed to walk across the puddle and then they threw it down yeah. to be a gentleman yeah. I yeah. hadn't thought about the ice sculpture wearing my jacket that is a good point yeah. so many possibilities <laughs> just jumped to bullying yeah you just jumped to Canadian bullying <laughs> Fucking Canadian Something that's police. never been documented before. <laughs> hey, hey, don't give her any maple syrup, eh? <laughs> tell, her, tell, her, tell her we've all run out. <laughs> all right. Um, that's it, right, that's Jack? It. Time to read some ads? Ad time. Okay. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Is there? Yes. yes. Yeah. I got a false positive the other day. I got diagnosed with anorexia. <laughs> <laughs> Better no symptoms. <laughs> better help will assist your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Now, this is therapist. I'm a big fan of the therapy. Therapy has gotten me through a lot of tough times in life. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, and especially with COVID. You're sitting at home. You think some of the times when I've been really depressed, it's been the problem has been I just can't get my ass into gear to go to the therapist. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But zooming in, talking to people. It's not a crisis line. It's on a self-help. It's professional counseling done security, securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available 
which may not be locally available in all areas. Let's say you're in an outpost in Alaska and you're like, oh, I think I might have some of that seasonal disorder. <laughs> Can't get to the therapist. Or the one you've got is just fucking Trevor, the Alaskan therapist. You don't want to go to him. He's fucking shit. He yeah. slept with your wife because she's the only other person in town, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to go to that one. Bloody get on, get on to better help. Get on to better help. Uh, the service is available worldwide, all right? Pick your language, no? You don't want to fall into the mistake I did. Uh, that Chinese lady didn't help me at all. <laughs> <laughs> you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. So even in those desperate times, it's not like an hourly thing where you go, oh, I'm going to see him next week. If you're panicking or something, send a message. Uh, you'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly videos or phone sessions. So you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as a traditional therapy. Because the other one, you get into the waiting room, you see all the other people going, oh, yeah, what's wrong with that bloke? Yeah. What's wrong with this one? And you press a button and then they call you in and you're out of your element. I do my therapy right now from bed, hmm. which is also where I do my three meals. <laughs> <laughs> BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches to, so they make it easy and free to change counsellors if needed. You're not stuck in with the same counsellor. If you don't like them, pick another one. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken advantage and changed their mental health and with the help of an experienced professional. I also need someone to help me with my reading. <laughs> Different ad. In fact, so many people have used better help that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. That's that's all 50 states in America, not 50 states of your mind. What are they doing? They, they're getting recruiting, they're recruiting additional, additional recruiting. counselors. Recruiting. So recruiting. also if you need a job and you're a therapist, maybe reach out to better help. Better help. As a special offer for ID Cut listeners, get 10% off your first month, not just one session, your first month at better help dot com slash idk we all shop online except my father <laughs> <laughs> when he's never bought a single he still uses the shops like a moron if he needs underwear or socks he goes down and buys them can you imagine yeah. got a mac weldon do you uh but you all shop online and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout but thanks to Honey. Ooh, Honey. Do, 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 do. It's got a code. Do, 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 do. <laughs> thanks to Honey. Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scores the internet for promo codes scores. and a, scores. I'm scoring all over the place <laughs> for promo codes and applies the best one and it finds it to your cart. Right, yeah. Honey supports over three. Th wait, I was about to say three, and then I was about to say three hundred thirty thousand. I didn't know there was that many stores. Supports over thirty thousand stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gambling products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favourite sites. Everyone do that. Just take a second. <laughs> Are you trying to figure out what you would buy on a porn uh, site? I forgot my fans only <laughs> password. Um, your favorite site. When you check out, the honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. That's all you got to do. It'll already find it for you. You're already getting discounts. Wait a few seconds as honey search for coupons. It can find for that site. If honey finds a working coupon, You'll watch the prices drop. You'll just see them drop in front of you. What did Honey save you money on? What, what, like, what, what yeah. could it save you money on? So I've, I've used it for a long time, and it's fucking great because normally I would search for promo codes just to find anything off, but now literally with this extension, once you go to the checkout, it'll just scan through all of the available promo codes and then find the greatest. Yeah, I'm joining out. it right now. It's because so good. Every time I, there's always like promo code and I always try to think I'm like going to be cool and I'm like, let me search the internet. Yeah. And then I do it and then it's some code and it's like from it's 10 expired, years ago yeah. and it's some jackass that wants you. Yeah, I just This is right just now. like, if you're not using this, you're wasting money I because I always save money uh, with this and it sound, that sounds like bullshit, but it's true. I'm going to join up as well. I, ironically, I, I want to buy some honey. <laughs> So I bet you can let's find see. Some. I bet you there's a honey discount for some honey. <laughs> uh, honey has found it's over 17 million members. 
It has it's, it's 17 million members. There's a lot of people taking advantage of honey. Over two, they've saved over two billion dollars in savings. Two billion dollars in your back pocket, not in theirs. Someone do the maths. What's what's two billion divided by seventeen million? Quickly, it's a Quickly. lot. I don't know. All right, they've saved some cash. <laughs> if you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings, and it's literally free to install in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a fa- favor. And supporting this podcast, and we need your support, or the podcast dies. Without honey, we die. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash IDK. That stands for I don't know. That's joinhoney.com slash IDK. We thank you, honey. Thanks, honey. Uh, all right. Now, please welcome to the show our guest, Alice Roberts. Good day, Alice Roberts. How are you? I'm I'm very well, thank you. How yeah. are you? I'm very good. I'm, I, I love having British guests on. I'm a bit of an anglophile. <laughs> you don't know this about me. I, I'm, I'm married to one of your lot, a woman and oh, a British yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm married to an English English girl. Um, I'm an anglophile, although I don't like calling myself anything that ends in the word file. Yeah, uh, it, it's just it's, it's slippery a little slope. dodgy. Slippery yeah. slope, but, but it uh, is. It is, and also it means then. What about the rest of them? Yeah. Yeah. No, I like I like your I like your digestive biscuits. I enjoy mm. a bit of Marks and Spencers. Oh, I have a <laughs> wonderful time over there. I, I I I like drizzly weather. So I'm hoping. Oh, don't don't. I, it's just been it's been drizzling from about October. I think it's it, just been dire. Yeah, it's never, and last night it went. We've been drizzling, and then. It was absolutely biblical last night. It was torrential. Yeah, but that's Horrendous. good. That's fun. A bit of reason to crack out the umbrella because the, dr- <laughs> the, the the drizzle the drizzle you can't really do anything with. You're no. like, oh, I've, you got, a, I've got a I've got a goodish coat. Yeah, you know. Anyway, so I'm hoping that your specialty is uh, English things. But I'm, uh, I'm going to look. I'm going to look in your room. And I'm going to I'm going to judge a book by its cover. There you go. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. Wow. That, that was really good, Jim, and I messed it up still. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were, yeah, I, was, I, I was heading, I was getting I know, into something. Alice, we, 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 have that, we have a little jingle there, and we still haven't figured out how to get into it right, and Jim did it perfectly, <laughs> and I still blew it. So. In the distance. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So, so you've got okay. So you've got the human skull behind you. Um, is is your expertise in the field of anatomy? That's it. <laughs> wow. What? That's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> 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 where's the where's the bam 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 bam? Celebrate the first time ever. Time ever. Wow. wow, that was pretty good. Wow. Yeah. I mean, no I reason. mean, I guess the skull really no would. Really <laughs> no, but there was also though. I thought I saw the word extinct or something in the background. I thought maybe or exercise. Okay, so it's it's yeah, human anatomy. That's what very I'm good. About. Jim. All right. It's spot on. Yeah. Spot yes. on. But you this isn't any old minutes. skull. That's not, that's not any, any old, old skull. skull. Well, that's no, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, well, bit, um, whose is it? <laughs> that's her twin sisters. <laughs> 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 whose skull is that? Is it someone's it's my spe- skull? It's not your <laughs> skull. Your skull's in your skull. Wait, it's my actual skull. Oh, it's it's oh, a it's a it. replica of your skull. So I was pretty close with twin. I'm on fire. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. It's, a, it's so weird. It's a, so you, I had an MRI scan done. A very very detailed. Uh, high resolution MRI scan of my of my head, and they three D printed my skull. Wow, oh, sweet. That's sweet! That's actually really cool. Yeah. I've always thought that when I die, I was thinking because you know how people like give their body parts, and everyone wants to give their skulls to the Shakespearean production so they can go, you know, to be or not Wait, to be. People really give their skulls. Yeah, people give oh, their like skulls. Community theater. Yeah, to community theaters and, and, and like Shakespearean. Thing. I don't think they do. <laughs> no, that's, I, I you said, you said that everybody's trying to give their skulls. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, I'm telling you, those Shakespearean companies, they get too many skulls. They're like, there's <laughs> an, enough skulls. We don't want any more skulls. Don't donate your skulls. So I'm so going to. Over, uh, here, over here in the, in, the, um, in the UK, we have this thing called the Human Tissue Act, which um, I think it probably expressly forbids people leaving their skulls. <laughs> yeah. Not the Shakespeare yeah, companies, pretty, though. You, tell me, check that out. Can you donate your skull to Shakespearean people? I think yeah. you're <laughs> I've, I've heard that a lot. We we'll got our researchers on. I, I, I was yeah. thinking I might I might give my skull just like to like I don't know, the London Comedy Store or something, and yeah. just have it just like as an ashtray 
Just turn upside Ooh, down. Oh, that's good. In the eye sockets? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Something like that. I don't want it respected. I don't want it like, <laughs> I don't want it like in a glass case yeah. or like sitting, or like or maybe, maybe, maybe with the liquor or something like that. But maybe the head of a mop or something just useful. <laughs> yeah. So no, I like what, that. I like that. Um, I, want okay, the, like, I want the Damien Hirst treatment. I want I want my skull encrusted with diamonds. I yeah, oh, yeah, the diamond yeah. encrusted one. That's yeah. a, that's was that Shirofsky crystals or the actual diamonds? I think they were real diamonds, weren't they? I don't know. I think they were. Yeah, I, 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 I love that. It doesn't look like you're allowed to give it away. Here, you right? can get you can give it to you can give. <laughs> oh wait, your... that's in that's in England and in Wales. So that's what she what Alice was just talking about. I don't know about the US. I think. Jackson. You're allowed to give your body yeah. to medical school. To medical so schools, that. you can be a and, kind of, you know. and this is the Shakespeare School of Medicine. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> they practice, you, you go, they learn medicine you, and they you, do. You go <laughs> see a real Shakespearean like play, and and if they have written on the posters with real skulls, that's like when you know. <laughs> I remember. Okay, because there's a thing in Britain. We'll get onto anatomy in just a second. There's a thing in Britain that you got people, you people Americans don't know about called pantomimes, mm -hmm. and it's this tradition that sort of happens at Christmas, and it might be you're doing. Jack and the Beanstalk or whatever. And then they have old soap, soap stars, you know, like some soap operas or some reality quest or old boy band members. And they all go perform it. And then the men dress up as women, which, which I don't know, yeah, today maybe you're not allowed to. Oh, I don't know. A panto is not everywhere. No, is no, no. It's, no. it's purely a British thing. And so, oh. the, and so, even in Australia, so we don't understand. Like, they don't understand that he's behind you. Oh no, you did. Yeah. Oh yes, you did. <laughs> you can't do those gags with Americans. They don't know what you're going on about. I've right? already checked out of this conversation. I can always judge a pantomime by the stars they have. Right? They go, oh, that person used to be on EastEnders. That person used to be on Hollyoaks and that type of stuff. And then there was when you see a post that goes with real dwarfs and they're doing Snow White, you know, oh, that's a high-end production. <laughs> They've brought in actual dwarfs and not just kids. Oh, i got to see that. Anyway. I found gonna... something about the Shakespeare skull. Oh, good. Shakespeare skulls. It was, there was a famous pianist named Andre Tchaikovsky, and he died in 1982 and gave his skull to the Royal Shakespeare Company, and apparently his mm -hmm. skull uh, upstaged all the actors, so they had to stop using it. Wow. wow. Yeah, he's a, he's Maybe I should famous. give that one. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should give that you one. That one. No, oh. I'm not giving that one. It's mine. Oh, I, I own Michael Hutchins one. <laughs> <laughs> it's still all crushed up from the belt. Oh my God. No. Jesus. No. Okay. no. I'm Australian. No, I'm, Australian. I'm Australian. I'm allowed to say that. He was no. masturbating. I don't know about that. No. Uh, we don't know. That's a good segue. Let me give uh, our guest a proper introduction. So. <laughs> Alice Roberts. Alice is a medical doctor, so maybe I should say Dr. Roberts. I don't know what you prefer, but um, and a university lecturer and professor of public engagement with science at the University of Birmingham since 2012. She has written books about the human anatomy, physiology, evolution, archaeology, and history. Uh, and some of these books include The Incredible Unlikeness. Uh, Unlikeliness. Um, um, the, the Complete Human Body, The Incredible Human Journey, Tamed, 10 Species That Changed Our World, and The Incredible Unlikeliness of Being. You can, oh, she's uh -oh, holding them all on the yeah. screen. Oh, yeah, tamed, yeah. You can find all of these books on her website, Alice oh, Roberts. This new one. Oh, this oh. Well, that, that one's one. good. It's like a vertigo the poster. Little the little book, book of human, wait. It's kind of reflecting. Humanism? Oh, humanism. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. There we go. Yes. And her website is alice-roberts.co.uk. We'll have uh, links to uh, that uh, one. So just, please go, if you're interested in any of these books, go. Them. So what what can I teach Alice right now? Ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we start that, Alice, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be in this field? Yeah, uh, basically it's all by mistake. So I should have been a surgeon. Uh, that's kind of what I set out to do. And then that's I funny. The surgeon was my fallback job myself. So <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? Completely by mistake. I, I, could, I, I was supposed to be an astronaut. But, like, what do you mean? Like, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. You're supposed to be a surgeon. Carry on. Sorry. I, I, I suppose I decided at age 11 I was going to be a surgeon, and that was that. And I kind of pursued it all the way through medical school out the other side. You know, it was starting off as a junior doctor with my eyes set on surgery. And then I got completely sidetracked into academia. So I ended up as a university lecturer. Uh, but I think because I love the teaching, I did a six month job teaching, which is a kind of regular thing to do for trainee surgeons because it, it helps you brush up your anatomy. So tra uh, teaching anatomy in the dissection room. So spending, you know, all day in the dissection room, dissecting bodies, teaching all of that. And then I kind of just stayed for it was meant to be six months. And I stayed for 11 years. So <laughs> I kind of, I kind of um, had to had to admit to myself that I probably wasn't going to be a surgeon at that point, And I'd kind of just 
There's still time. There's still, like, there's yeah, you can you can still be a surgeon. Don't say. I, yeah. I, I, it's I a side have, hustle. I a side hustle surgery. I haven't ruled out myself being one. <laughs> <laughs> no, the trouble is, I mean, I think I think it goes back um, to A level physics. So when I did um, A level physics, I found out that I was um, extremely good at taking things apart. Like we had we had to take apart a toaster. And I and I and I identified all of the parts inside this toaster, but I never managed to put it back together again. And so I think it's probably a really good idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I ended yeah. up as an anatomist yeah. and not a surgeon because I'm extremely good at taking bodies apart. You know, that's my that's my superpower. I'm very very good at dissecting bodies into very tiny pieces. That would be a good I'm Tinder so good. bio. Yeah. I'm extremely good at taking <laughs> bodies apart. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we fixed your heart. Here's some extra parts. I didn't know what to do with those. No. Uh, like, yeah, where does that go? They, no. they wouldn't fit back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask Jim everything he knows about yeah, human anatomy is what we're going to talk about, anatomy. And um, it's a very broad subject, so I'm going to help him along with some questions. I know everybody at home, we're not going to cover everything. I'm, I'm tired of people writing in. You didn't cover We're not going to get to everything with human anatomy today. We're going to get to the basics. But, uh, uh, leg bones connected yeah, to so, the... So at the end of this, uh, Alice, uh, you're going to great... <laughs> You're going to grade um, Jim on his accuracy, 0 through 10, 10 being best. Kelly's going to grade him on mm -hmm. confidence. I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll tally the scores. 21 through Excellent. 30, you're a bonehead. Uh. 11 through 20, cadaver. 0 through 10, skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be really harsh as well because, yes. you know, my, my medical students are doing their exams at the moment, so it, there has to be parity here. Yeah, oh, no, 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 sure. I should be measured the same way as a, <laughs> as, as a, as a medical student. <laughs> like, not only in not taking the course, I wasn't smart enough to get into the course, and now I'm meant to be just as good as them on completing the course. <laughs> Make sure you put your name at the top of the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, please be harsh because a lot of times our guests are very nice to Jim and we don't, we don't like it when they're nice to him. Okay. <laughs> um, wh what is anatomy or what is human anatomy? It's the different body parts. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all the different parts of your anatomy. Okay. Um, <laughs> when did humans start studying anatomy and like how did they learn about it? And Ah, uh, that would have been Korag the caveman. <laughs> and, and Korag's would, back. Yeah, and he would have been like this, oh, leg. <laughs> How do you know how to say leg? <laughs> yeah, he was the first person to name it. Okay. Before that, they were wobbly bits off your, off your, <laughs> off your, off your middle bit. And how did he? How did they like learn about it? What? How? What did they do? Oh, uh, what would have happened is there would have been something with uh, Da Vinci when he did that thing, and mm. Leonardo da Vinci did the, the the anatomy of man. That guy that was standing there like he was on a crucifix type of thing, and then he would have started doing all that stuff that all the measurements where he was going. You know that measurement that your wrist to your elbow is the size of your foot and stuff like that, and this your span is as high as your thing and. Sort of maybe the more uh, scientific way of saying how we should all be put together. Okay. Um, what is a dissection? A dissection is when you cut something in half and you look at it from a halfway. So the classic one is, um, you know, when they dissect a the brain, they can they can cut into it and then you can see like, oh, we have problems here, from maybe from smoking or a stroke or a whatever, and you can dissect it. The, the best dissection, like one that's like not actually when you like, because I always saw in American movies, you're all fucking dissecting frogs all the time. There was mm -hmm. all, there was, I know there was like happened in ET, but this is what I thought of American. All you kids were sitting in class and then one day someone brings in a frog and you all start getting your scalpels out <laughs> and cutting into it and then you're throwing frogs at each other. That's what I thought happened. It, never in Australia were we were given a bloody, here's a wombat, kids. Go to town. That never happened. No, nobody brought in the frog. They had specially yeah. preserved well, no, frogs. I know, I know, uh, I know. We the, dissected the, them. The yeah. school had a bucket of frogs, and they're Worms. like, all right. Now, we never got given that. Either. Okay. Yeah. That never happened. I did not like dissecting the frog. And, I and dissected there, a lamprey. Mm. Yeah, we were never Fun fact. We were just <laughs> never given dead animals in Australia. There was never a reason. The school thought give That's because you guys animal. don't understand freedom. What, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what, what is a vivisection? A vivid section is Viva, when you, section. Oh, a, a, vi a, a vivid Vivi section is when you do it really graphically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you cut into it. I also think like the best like what was the other one? The one that I said cut in half. That was the dissection. Dissection. Like so dissection. so when you had like when you did like 
we're learning about sex and they gave you that side on view of the one testicle and the thing going that way. That was like what a dissection sort of looks like, but mm-hmm. you can dissect the thing. Cut into <laughs> like a... I said, the one testicle and the thing going that way as if it's not, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? The, the, the penis. Oh, okay. And so, so oh. but they dissect, they dissect things and they cut in half. So they see how it works. The vivisection. Okay. So I'm going to say dis, uh, dissection is when, when you cut it in half. A vivisection is when you go sideways like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's, one of them is horizontal, one of them is vertical. Okay, I'm going to talk about different systems and we'll ask you a few questions about each. What is the skeletal system? The skeletal system is your uh, skeleton. Okay. And it's the system of how it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jim likes to answer questions with the uh, With the word and the, the definition. They don't name <laughs> these things <laughs> like this for no reason. Okay. <laughs> what is it made of? What's the skeletal system? Um, made of bone. Bones. There bones. we go. Okay. Bones. Yeah, yeah. Bones. How many bones in the human body? Uh, I've heard, I've been given this number before, like, I don't know, like 274. Okay. What's the largest? Uh, well, for me or for you? <laughs> <laughs> Not a bone. Okay. I'm going to go the largest bone, what, in length or mass and weight? Because if it's mass and weight, I'm going to say it's the human skull would be the largest one. But, you know, you, you, like your, for, your forearm or your, your shin bone, it, which is connected to the foot bone. <laughs> and the leg bone. Okay. Your shin bone would be longer than that of the head, but I would say pound for pound, yeah, your skull is the heaviest and biggest. What's the smallest bone? Ah, uh, there'd be one in your foot. The big a, one in your foot. No, there'd be a little <laughs> tiny one in your foot that goes between your clavicle and your davicle. Okay. <laughs> Clavicle's right up here. What, what, yeah, what, what, what is the difference between cartilage and bone? Oh, uh, cartilage. Um, oh, it's, it's a little known fact for us that, uh, that sharks are only made of cartilage. They don't have any bone in them. It's not yeah. a little in fact. Bone actually. is hint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but okay, so so cartilage is in between your joints for the most part, and it's um, sort of the shock absorbers of the human body to make everything sort of move, so it doesn't rub bone on bone, so that you can sort of have things joints rub against each other. Okay, so I'm not going to even ask you what the muscular system is because I know you're going to tell me well, it's, it's muscles. No, it's all the muscles that yeah. join together. <laughs> <laughs> How many muscles do we have? Ah, oh, many, many muscles. <laughs> okay, um, moving well, on. Well, I, 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 like, I, I don't know. Can you grow new ones? Because I, I reckon you. We ha- everyone has all of them. It's just where they're shit or not. So let me count mine. One, oh, my six pack. No, I got me six on. pack. <laughs> <laughs> and I, got, oh, I would, I would say there'd be muscles. I would say there'd be three times as many muscles as we have bones. Because you'd have to have four times as many. Because you have to have the muscles around each bone. To make things flex and move and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Okay. Um, do you know what the strongest muscle is in your body? The brain, the human brain. Oh, the, what, for lifting or <laughs> for for lifting things? Strongest, like, you know, that has the most strength, pounds per square inch maybe, or like I, I would, I would lift, yeah, I whatever would, you want to say. say. I would say your thighs. Thighs, thigh yeah, muscle. Thigh, the th- one of your thigh muscles. Do you know what a tendon is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's someone uh, that, that lives in your apartment. That you pay your rent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very strong. <laughs> no, a tendon, a tendon is like a little bit of like, it's like stretchy. It's like a muscle, but it's like a stretchy bit. A tendon, it's like when they get Tommy John surgery, they cut a tendon out of your ass to put it in your elbow. So I think like a tendon is like when you can tear a tendon, they're no, they're no good, but they're things that help flex and stretch and stuff. Yeah. What's the largest organ? Uh, the largest organ in the human body is your skin. Damn. Yeah. You know what p- system your skin is part of? Uh, your skeletal muscular system. B- both those systems? Yeah, it's, okay. w- it's working in conjunction. <laughs> it's a bone muscle. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions here about different systems. We'll kind of go through them. Uh, so let's see. Respiratory system. Name some components. The lungs. Anything else? Clavicle. <laughs> <laughs> What about no, the davicle? No, there'd be the lungs. There'd be the um, esophagus. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There'd be the, f- the throat tube. <laughs> um, there'd yeah. be the dangly punching bag at the back of your throat. <laughs> that, that probably gets involved. Do you know the difference between the pharynx and a larynx? Oh, um, a larynx and uh, okay, your larynx. I've had that is, is where you get laryngitis is where your vocal cords are. And I've had nodules and, and I've had swollen larynx before. Well, so pharynx. So pharynx is, uh, I don't know what a pharynx, I've never heard of pharynx, but I know what your larynx is. Okay. Um, digestive system. Mm. We just talked about this on yeah. another podcast. Yeah. 
you, can you name anything from the digestive system? The intestine, the lower colon. Uh huh. I've gone creepy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Like, so it's every it's it, and it and it goes to about six meters. You know, it, it stretches six meters out, long. Six meters long. Yeah. What does your gallbladder do? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it just gets in the way. I feel. I feel like gold. Yours does, I feel like gallbladder, <laughs> prostate, and spleen can all fuck off. I don't. I don't know. Gallbladder, if, prostate, and spleen can yeah, fuck I, off. I don't know if anyone's ever gone. Oh, thank God, would me spleen's in good nick. You know, like my mate. My mate was in a car accident, and they removed his spleen, and he's just, he's much healthier than me. Uh, he's just spleenless, and and no one's. He's never gone. In, oh, I can't do it. I don't have a spleen. Hmm. Can't get on this roller coaster. I don't have a spleen. No, he's fine. So you, you don't you, need the spleen. So useless. you should get rid of your spleen. The spleen is meant to help other organs but who gives a fuck <laughs> you know what I mean my organs are fine on their own yeah because you can live with like one kidney and stuff like that it's it's you know there's a few bad design faults like the the idea of the throat and the wind you talk about this the, yeah two whole system two, you, 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 well, the, I'll get into that yeah I think, you have I think a flap that's no good we shouldn't breathe and eat out of the same two the whole I'm, you, you, I'm all you, for you that. Catch I think things, and also you know, there's nothing dolphins whales better system there's, there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's nothing worse than you're having a drink and some of it's gone down your windpipe and it's like you know that you've got a painful thing coming in about four seconds yeah. and yeah. you keep drinking in the regular hole going, ah, fuck, yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. have to cough and look like yeah, an idiot. That, that's a bad <laughs> system. I agree with you. And I'm going to have to go, I <laughs> went down the wrong way. Yeah, that, that's a bad system. I also think uh, babies coming out of a vagina, too small. Too, a vagina too su small. Submarine hatch door. I'll tell you another <laughs> one. I'll tell you another one, Alice. I'll tell you another one. The, the uh, vagina wrongly located on the human body. Shouldn't be there. It should be up near the shoulder. Right, far away. It shouldn't be right next to the asshole. I'll tell you that much. The two of them don't get along, and they infect <laughs> each other on the regular. <laughs> on the regular, you spoon a lady. Your dick gets a bit near her ass, and then she, you go to put it in the vagina, and she's just like, "Oh, well, that's my month ruined." And you're like, "What did I do? I was just laying here." Those things should be very separate. Okay, let's talk about cardiovascular system. Cardiovascular, that's got to do with your heart, and that's uh, pumping blood throughout your body. That's the okay. cardiovascular. It's arteries and veins. Yeah, and, what's a vein? What does a vein do? Um, a vein a vein is carries blood to other parts of the body. An artery, okay, basically. The, one goes are, to the heart and one goes away from the heart. Oh, the, I'll go the artery, artery, because if you cut an artery, your blood starts pumping out. So I say arteries go away from the blood. Mm. But I always thought that arteries were like your highways and your freeways, and veins were just like your side streets, surface streets. Yeah, yeah, and like you, <laughs> like you cut an artery, it's like, oh no, you've ruined you've ruined the one hundred and one vein. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No vein is bad. You don't want to cut a vein, but it's not as bad as cutting an artery. And what about capillaries? Capillaries are little things that where where back in the Those day, are alleys. Yeah, <laughs> alleys. No, you, you, you pinch your cheeks, and if you can make your capillaries, because uh, real women, this is back in Jane Austen's day. This isn't me. This isn't me that's saying this. Real women pinch whores use rouge. That was the <laughs> big one for the day. That, that, this your country said that, Alice. Don't look all shocked at me. Like in Jane Austen, they used to so they used to pinch and pinch so that the capillaries would break. Where where I and many relatives of my family have done that just through alcohol, the old fashioned way yeah. of ruining a capillary. <laughs> um, we have so many things there. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions, and then we can kind of go over stuff sure. together. So we're well, not just anything else. I think I'm doing better and worse than I thought I'd do. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit of both. <laughs> I will get to how long. How, how long do you think all the blood vessels are in the human body? Like if you oh, them. if you stretched all of them. Uh, I stretched all of them together. Oh, I reckon that would be 20 meters. 20 meters. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you know what the lymphatic system does? Um, it's, it's the system that's, that's, that's certain about everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's I'm, the whole thing. Yeah. It's like, it's like, I'm lymphatic about <laughs> this. <laughs> What's the what's the emphatic system do then? Uh, is it, it got to yeah. do with lymph noids and stuff like that? These yeah. are like little lymph things. what? Yeah, L L <laughs> lymph noids. No, 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 no. no nodes. Lymph, lymph nodes. nodes. Yeah, lymph the nodes. noid was the thing from Domino's Pizza that I don't know if you even had in Australia. No, I've seen references to him in TV shows. <laughs> okay. um, but, 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 uh, the, the lymph nodes. Avoid the noid. They can become cancerous. And I, I have like, there's a lot of them under your ears and stuff like that and around your Everything neck. Everything can become cancerous, just so you know. Yeah, underneath your neck and all that type of stuff. It's no good. Okay. No good. Let's move on. 
Um, <laughs> I'll, let me ask two, a couple the, more questions. The, the, lymph, the lymph noids are the, <laughs> the they just can't get enough noids. We, we, we can't get to everything, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump here and then we'll get we'll get Alice. Like get prefer Alice or Doctor Roberts or just so I'm not being rude. It's Professor Roberts actually, but um. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> professor Roberts. Yeah, Professor. I'd that's say what I'm professor. gonna call you. Yeah, that's I'm gonna call better. you Professor Roberts. Sorry, but you can call me Alice. Yeah. Professor Alice? Can I call you Professor Alice? No, just Alice. Uh, yeah, I like Professor away. Alice, though. I like, I like okay, Jim, how many... If I was called Professor, I would not be. I would be, My children would be calling me Professor. <laughs> uh, what is a plane in reference to a body? Um, it's, it's higher up. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what, what do you mean a plane? Like body planes. Do you understand? Do you know anything about that? Uh... No, not really. Okay, I've, one, seen, I've, I've met some people with some pretty plain bodies. Me, <laughs> <laughs> one last question: How many body cavities can you name? All right, all, right, all, all day, all day. Do I need the technical term or the slang? Just what, whatever you think. The pee hole. <laughs> Wait, the pee hole. That's yeah, the technical the urethra. Term. Okay, urethra. <laughs> Uh, it's like the Antifa, Antifa for <laughs> urine. Yeah. Uh, and that's on the men. The, the women obviously have the vaginal hole, plus they have the little hole that they pee out of called, okay. called pee hole. That's, these, these are holes. Yeah, all holes, orifices. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not really a cavity. I was yeah. talking about cavities. And, but oh, cavities? Now yeah. we'll do all the holes first. <laughs> <laughs> not even one of the you questions. Got, you got your asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got your two <laughs> nose holes. Yeah, what are they? Nose holes. Yeah, nose holes, yeah. nostrils, nostrils. Yeah. And then you got your ear holes, mm -hmm. your ear holes. It's two ear holes, two nose holes, an ass hole, a pee hole, a vaginal hole. That's all your – oh, your mouth hole. Pie hole. That's a big one, your mouth hole. That's a good one. It's called the pie hole. That's all the one. Now, what was your question? <laughs> all right. No, no, uh, tell you, I might know cavities. <laughs> Professor Roberts. Um, <laughs> when they do a cavity search, they search the holes. I think, I think it's the same thing. That's true. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what they're saying. We're going to do a cavity search. They search the holes. I think a cavity is a hole. I think you're trying to fool Have me. Have you ever heard the term chest cavity? Uh, okay, but when they go, you've got a cavity, what are they talking about? When the dentist is in yeah, there? Yeah, no, it's a hole. It's a hole. Yeah. Not a hole. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Roberts, uh, on a scale of zero to ten, ten being the best, how did Jim do on his knowledge of human anatomy? Oh, I don't know. It's so hard to grade him because I would have said that there's really good knowledge there of broad concepts, but somewhat lacking in detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think probably five. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so okay. Right. Right. I, 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 I never, bad. I never said I knew bad. much about the yeah. human anatomy. I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, you asked um, what is anatomy, and you said different parts, and it kind of is, but um, I suppose strictly speaking, the word anatomy means cutting up. So, uh, okay. Wow. Well, we have we, 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 we have to we have to grade them on two other things here that don't really matter before we get to that. So uh, I think I'm going to give him a six on confidence. Six on confidence. Oh. I'm going to give you a minus two on et cetera. Your skeleton. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like saying that word. Um, so anatomy. What does he mean? You just said what anatomy. What does it mean then? It means to. It means cut cutting up. up. So the tame bit means cutting, and ana means apart. So it means cutting apart. So it literally yeah. is kind of dividing up the human. But but you said I mean you know different. It is cutting the body into parts. But you're right. Oh, really. That's what it means. When did it start? Wow. You said cavemen. I wouldn't use the term cavemen, but I would certainly say. What is that? No, what is that not uh, appropriate anymore? You can't call them cavemen. Do they get <laughs> it's offended? It's kind of. It's kind. It's difficult. I find it difficult because it wasn't just men. Uh, and also because they didn't live in caves, so it kind of doesn't really work on any level. <laughs> so You're like, telling me there wasn't just, one. Where did they? The, one of them would have lived in a cave. That's that's, <laughs> that's where their bloody paintings are. They, what, yeah, they, just, they, they just go they there may to have do gone art. Into, yeah, yeah. They were, you know, they may have gone in there occasionally, and occasionally they hung out in there and had hearths in there. But they were mostly living in tents. So they're tent people. They're not cavemen. Okay. Um, but but I would say yes, anatomy goes back to prehistory. I've just done a radio series about this because I'm a broadcaster as well. So I've just done a history of anatomy radio series. And we started back in prehistory talking about the fact that there's lots of evidence of bodies being taken apart. We're not quite sure why. Um, just there's for a fun. Really weird. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a really weird skull from Cheddar just down the road from me, Cheddar Gorge, which has got a load of caves in it, which uh, there's quite a lot of bones in those caves. And um, certainly some of the human bones have been smashed up and look as though they've been cannibalized. But one of the skulls, they've kind of taken the skull and they've just bashed off the bottom of it. And then they're just left with the um, the cranium, so the domed bit. Mm. And then they've chipped it very carefully around the edge. So they think they've made it into a bowl. 
I mean, I don't know what it was. Yeah. A kind of nice little fruit bowl. Um, you know, yeah. maybe a, a, yeah, I mean, like, a drink. Like, uh, fruit, but you'd only hold one orange, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Some grapes. Grapes would be good in there. Yeah, you could get yeah. grapes. Strawberries. Good. I tell you, it'd be good for a, a, a few more teasers. You could fill a bowl of more teasers. <laughs> Some hard candy, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Skittles all day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're doing. Um, and I don't know if they had skittles in the Paleolithic. Um, <laughs> and then, and then you said, um, what did you say? Oh, yeah, proper proper scientific anatomy. Really, we start with Aristotle in the fourth century BCE. You said Leonardo da Vinci. He's one of the best anatomists of all time. So you know, you get extra marks for him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was just awesome, and his drawings of the human body, which never got published. So he was he was drawing the human body in the late fifteenth into the sixteenth century in private notebooks, which got published centuries later. And you look at his what he was drawing. I've actually got. A little my yeah my coaster, mm. Be, you know everything is a bit themed in this house. Oh. The coaster is a little bit of Leonardo da Vinci there. Oh, that's one of his drawings. This. Wow, yeah, yeah. Cool. Was he was a, amazing. A naked so, lady, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that's and they didn't get published. Why? Because back then I remember reading a book on Michelangelo, and he would secretly dissect or like look at human bodies too to learn. And but that was illegal, I guess, right? Or is that no? It was legal. Um, so this is. There was a there was a moratorium on human dissection since um, Hierophilus in Alexandria in Egypt in the fourth century, fourth into the third century BC, and then you couldn't do it for more than a thousand years. And then in the Renaissance, they started doing it again, and and that was basically because they had medical schools and they they recognised that in order to teach doctors, you had to do anatomy. Um, so yeah, so people were artists were dissecting um, and learning about the body and using that for. Uh, the basis of their paintings, but also um, there were famous anatomists during the during the Renaissance as well, and famous surgeons. Can I can I ask you a personal question? It, it, well, this is a personal work question. Um, <laughs> what do you most enjoy cutting into? A big fat men. C, okay, we, like men, women, children. I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> what, what, is, what is your what is your favorite thing to cut into? Like as a as a person. Live cats. <laughs> Yeah, where, where you go, oh, we've got one of them coming in. <laughs> yeah. ah. Well, actually, um, so going back to the uh, original ambition to be a surgeon, I wanted to be a paediatric surgeon. So I wanted to be a children's surgeon um, because I I loved the craft of the of the surgery and the and the beautiful detail of it, um, and also the fact that children recover so quickly from surgery, and it was just such a lovely thing to do to you know to, to operate on a child and then. They would, you know, they'd be, they come in so ill and you'd operate on them and then they would be, you know, amazingly almost back to normal the next day to the extent that I was saying, stay, you know, stay in bed. You're going to, you're going to rip your stitches out if you start jumping on the bed, stop jumping on the bed. Mm. Um, but in terms of the dissection room, um, you basically don't want to be dissecting fat people. You just end up, you know, you don't, you're not particularly interested. Fat isn't interesting. It's just not interesting. It's just like yellow custard and you're just cutting through mm. slightly yeah. thicker. Custard yeah. to get what you're interested in. Custard. No, no. I, yeah. well, the next fat person I see, I'm going to walk up to him and go, you're not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so dissecting. Versus- it's mean, it's mean, I know. but <laughs> So you're like a nice, lean, uh, women or, or men, is is there a different in skin, like, like to cut into it? Is there a different texture or am I just being no. an idiot saying this? No, just no, just obviously different bits and bobs in the in the requisite places. So, um, a lot of similarities. I mean, it's very it's very difficult to the other thing. The, the other specialism of mine is human bones. So I help archaeologists out with um, looking at looking at bones from archaeological sites and that kind of thing. And it's very hard for most of the bones of the body to tell any difference between men and women. Um, we we have the best bet of of sexing a skeleton of telling whether somebody was male or female looking at the pelvis obviously mm. for obvious reasons already mentioned that the, there's got to be the potential for a baby to get out through a female pelvis so it tends to be wider um and then the other the other bone which tends to be uh, sexually dimorphic we say is the skull um and that is just generally because men tend to be chunkier and more muscled and anywhere where you've got muscle attachments like um things like this um little prong behind the ear on my skull, which is called the mastoid process. That's much larger in a male compared with a female. And also men have these great big, I've got a very smooth back of my head. Oh, you have a lovely skull. skull. <laughs> yeah. It's I nice, mean, isn't it? It's is a beautiful nice. skull. It doesn't um, look lumpy or anything oh, smooth. No, at all. Not, fl- not flat on the top. You couldn't put a beer on top of that? Oh, oh yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, pretty flat. But men, <laughs> men often have a great big, 
a great big prong of bone sticking out there. If you see, if you see the back of um, a man's head, and he sh- if he shaved his head, you can you can see it sticking out really, really prominently. This it's called the external occipital protuberance. I do like all the words in the anatomy. <laughs> yeah, this um, is this is something with anatomy that's like. Do you like name things, femurs, and all this type of stuff? That's the only one I could think of. <laughs> right? What's what's wrong with just calling it leg bone? Your upper leg, your lower leg. Why why are the technical names? Is it all just um, named after the people who discovered them or discovered them? They're it's basically just... some of it is, um, but we're trying to get away from those, which I think is sad in a way. It's just that um the the eponymous names, say so things like the crypts of Leverkun in the intestine or the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas. That's fine, but different people, different countries had um, fantastic anatomists. And so you'll find that the French have their own name for these various parts because they had fantastic French anatomists who were discovering them around the same time. Oh, um, the French are the being names... difficult and not naming it the same as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> when did that ever come along? I, I've heard that the English, they have a different name for <laughs> the, for the zumpy dump. They call it the skull, but uh, no, it's I'm not a zumpy dump to me. <laughs> But most of it goes back to the early anatomists in um, in ancient Greece, and they were obviously naming their things uh, with Greek names. And so those Greek names then come through into Latin. Um, and so most of anatomy is actually Latin. Some of it's Latinized Greek, but it's mostly Latin. So it is, you know, femur just means thigh bone in Latin. That's all it means. Right. Um, so it's it, it's just that's when it was first named, and so the name is stuck. So but it Western. actually works really well. It works really well to have a have an international language of anatomy for medicine because medicine ah, is that's international. That's why name. that makes yeah, sense that, makes that sense. we're all calling it FEMA. So so even in Japan they're calling it a FEMA. Yeah. Oh yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I thought they might have <laughs> they might, might have had a different word for FEMA. That's why when when you always say that in America they don't use the metric system. I use the metric system when I used to be a biologist because yeah. that's you, that you have to use the metric system because everybody uses Celsius and metric system in the science community. The metric system is better, isn't it? Much better. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's better. Zero is freezing, 100 is boiling. Except in perfect. England. Yeah. Bloody perfect. In England, you guys use miles, right? Yeah, they still use miles in England. Oh, we do. That, we do. Weird. Well, we kind of but, use a mixture, actually. It's yeah. really it's really confusing. Which is now. also yeah, because we, it's such a small place that yeah. they, they go, oh, it's 40 miles away. Oh, the next town is. 40 miles <laughs> and you're like oh yeah, the- here you're like you're almost home <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, well, yeah, yeah, like here it's like am i going to disneyland well we're going to uh, another town <laughs> Say, oh god i have to go from liverpool to manchester i won't be back for hours love. <laughs> <laughs> um so dissection oh. versus vivisection I, I don't uh, know. Well, dissection is just um, dissection or dissection, however you say it. It is just cutting up again. Um, so I think you got mixed up with bisection, oh, <laughs> yeah, dissecting yeah. things. It's kind of cutting things in half. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm vivisection. A, I'm a is... disexual. <laughs> yeah. Just like people who are dead. <laughs> no. no. Okay, I'll stop with that. I'll stop. <laughs> Okay, so there's, there's going to be some rumors um, after this episode. <laughs> vivisection is um, cutting up living people. So I suppose oh. surgeons are oh. vivisectionists in a way, but then they put them back together. I've dated um, a few of them. But I read- some of the early, some of the early anatomists were vivisectionists. We think so. Herophilus in Alexandria um, was getting hold of prisoners and kind of cutting them up alive. So, sur- so right. surgeons are vivisectionists, oh, and people who yeah. people who do just I might be wrong, and people who do autopsies are dissectionists. Yeah. Um. Or I mean, they're pathologists. Yeah. Because they're looking for pathology. So it tends but to be you're just going to gloss over the fact that you said people used to cut open <laughs> like living criminals, like yeah. prisoners. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, you're sure. fine with that? For sure. Well, you, what crime do they do? <laughs> Stole an apple. <laughs> 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 well, you pay the crime, you cut the time. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. We'll just keep going. Um, so skeletal system, Jim said it was the bones, 274 bones in the human body. Biggest bone was the skull. Cartilage so far, yeah. Like, how do you do there in that section? Uh, pretty good. I mean, the sk- the skeletal system is the skeleton. So mm. uh, yeah, um, yeah. Nailed that. Pretty straightforward. Um, it's it's bone and cartilage. Um, so cartilage is included because cartilage is um kind of this structural fabric of uh, of the body as well. And there are bits like the the front of your rib cage. The ribs stop being bony um as you come around to the front, and then and then the end of them is completely made of cartilage, mm. which is 
um, useful because it makes the rib cage flexible. You couldn't do CPR if there weren't costal cartilage. That's the thing they always fill in with the plastic on the one, the skeleton. That yeah. was in. Do you, do you, do mm. you, in your office, do you just have a skeleton? Please tell me you do. I always love when I see one of them, like a full skeleton. No, I do. I don't. I have got a, I have got a, um, I mean, this is my home office, but I have actually got a real skull in a box down there. Mm. Um, which is a skull I make. Well, I'm making all my lectures into videos at the moment because we can't do live live lectures for students. Mm. So I'm here at home endlessly making anatomy anatomy videos. But yeah, so that's all I've got at home at the moment is a skull. But in um, in my old office, I used to have um, all sorts of bits of various humans dotted around the place. You know, a couple of arm bones under the desk, um, mummified hand on a shelf. Do yeah. you um, do you okay? Are you a fan of the TV show Dexter? Hmm. No, not really. Okay, no, there are lots of. It's a lot of anatomy in it. It's yeah, well, it's, he's a serial killer who's actually one of those cops that's a blood spatter. Uh, yeah, he's a blood spatter. Oh no, yeah. I did. Yeah, I did watch a couple of episodes of it. Yeah, yeah. it was quite. Yeah, it was quite anatomically correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you were going yeah. to ask her Bones. There's a show called Bones. No, I don't know what Bones is. I've never watched Bones. <laughs> yeah, yeah I thought it was inappropriate. I have a small child in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Anyways, um, how, what's the largest bone? Well, it depends how you're measuring it, uh, as Jim said. So, so he's quite right about that. So yeah, in terms of point. in terms of volume, I suppose you would say the skull, and probably in probably in terms of weight. I think that's quite interesting. I'm not sure. The femur is definitely the longest bone in the body because mm-hmm. that's about half a meter long, um, and also it's pretty heavy. So it it's gonna be it's gonna be quite similar. I don't tend to go around weighing bones. It's not one of those things. I don't go around counting them either. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, that kind of classic pub quiz question: How many bones have you got in your body? Well, everybody's got a slightly different number. What? Because uh, yeah. some people have extra little bones in various tendons. Um, yeah. You know, some of us will have various bones in our skull fused. So is that one? You know, is that one yeah. bone or two bones? Mm. Um, so it is it, it is a very very difficult question to to answer. So, so do we know what it. the smallest bone is then, or no? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it is in the ear. Oh, so, uh, it's an ear bone. The, the, the drum thing. Is it the drum thing? Yeah. So yeah. there, are, there's so going from the back of your eardrum, there's a sequence of three tiny little bones called ossicles, which just means tiny bones. Um, and they're the incus, the malleus, and the stapes. And of all of them, the stapes is the tiniest, and it's it's absolutely minute. It's a couple of millimeters across, teeny tiny little oh bone, God. stirrup shaped. Is it, yeah. I know you said there's a different number. Is that can you give us a ballpark within like? 50 of bones like was that close with 270 something or is it close yeah to quite close it gets somewhere between 200 and 230 um that's gonna be the kind yeah. of range See, they tell you when you're a kid there was like does it i remember it was like 206 they would tell me when i was young and mm. then but that does make sense we were saying yeah it's never gonna be the exact yeah fused Got I it. feel like I'm carrying way more bones than the regular person. <laughs> <laughs> Just knocking around. Even, even, yeah. even when I lose own. weight, people are always surprised by how much I weigh. I think I'm a lot of bone. <laughs> so is that the same thing with muscles then? We don't know how many muscles. Yeah, and the, the, there's just a lot of variation in the human body. So, you know, we, we have 12 pairs of ribs as a standard, but some people have extra ribs down in the lumbar region and some people have extra little ribs up in their neck as well. So, it's you know, it's all kind of quite variable. What the- Fuck is that? <laughs> yeah, it's really yeah, you got lower, like a snake. You got lower ribs. <laughs> He's got neck I ribs. Yeah, what, I, I once broke a rib. I, it was the worst. I was I, I was living in London Info. and I was working as a bartender or something like that. I'd drunk too much. I'd passed out on a couch and then a couple of guys decided to wrestle. And then while I was asleep, a guy just fell into my rib cage, bang, when I was laying mm. on a couch or pushed over by another bloke, bang, cracked my rib. And I was so drunk and I walked back and I was like, oh man, my fucking ribs hurt. <laughs> And then, like, one of them just sort of popped out, like the skin pushed right out. Oh, like, oh, God. No. Oh. Out of the skin? No, it didn't. The skin it's didn't like you could see it protruding. Skin, like a big lump oh, yeah, protruding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pushed it back. I went, Frunk, and Ouch. popped it back in. I was like, oh, man. And I had to work at the bar the next day. And there's no cast they can give you for that. Uh-uh. All you do is you bandage it up, try to keep mm. it tight until they fuse together again. And it's a fuck. Yeah, rib injuries nightmare. are horrible. My ribs are almost always dislocated, and it's so painful because, like, even just breathing is is so painful, but there's nothing you can do, really. Yeah, no, you just keep putting them together. No, yeah. yeah, it's really painful. And if you get a cough while you've yeah. got yeah. oh, you a cracked yeah. rib, right. ow, ow. I've had a fracture. I break, I I've break had my fractures. cough six. A fractured skull. I had I had my head bashed into a table, and I fractured oh. my skull in between my eyeballs because they said that was the soft. And yeah, it's the softest part of the human skull. So even if you get hit on the other side of your head, the fracture will happen there between your eyes, above your nose. 
on, on for the it's most very for the most paper part. thin bone there. Yeah. yeah, it's fact. It's called the lamina papyracea. It's part of the ethmoid bone between your between your eyeballs, and it is absolutely paper thin. And how, how did you break your coccyx? I was dancing on a table in London and um, <laughs> fell off the table. <laughs> I like that. That's how professors roll in England. <laughs> all your professors are like Stephen Hawking's and all these other people. Oh, maybe you know Stephen Hawking's probably not a good. Yeah, <laughs> like, not a good to go. like you're like sitting in their chairs, not, not hurting themselves, in perfect condition. No, they all. They, they, there's always people partying. I'm, I, I broke my my coccyx when I I broke it on water, jumping off of a very high structure. Landing perfectly on the water, which could be at that height, is almost like concrete at that point. And I just broke the tip. And, and you I never worked for the circus again. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. At the at the time, we had been drinking, and I didn't even know. And I just it was like at night, and I went to bed, and I woke up, and I couldn't move. Uh, I I felt like I was paralyzed. I was like ah, and I was yelling at my friends with hangovers, "Help me out of bed!" And then I was it's in high school. So sp- painful, so painful. And again, it's one of those things that you can't really, you know, you you just have to. Muscle they give you that donut. They give you an inflatable donut. I was in high school, and they're like, "Just sit on this." I was like, "Nope, not, not, <laughs> not bringing that to high school. I'm not going to sit on an inflatable Here donut." What's this bit at the, that bit at the end of your hand there? That that just bone there, like it's a, yeah, on your hand. I, yeah, on, yeah, on that's the very a little bone. Hand, I can my one bone. here on one hand is very loose, and I can move it from side to side with my thumb. Mm. On the other hand, I can't, but I can actually shift that bone back and forth. Is yeah, that, you is, should be able to shift it a little bit, not too much, though, because oh, no, it's thing, quite this firmly banged down by ligaments. <laughs> this thing's rolling um, around on me. For sure. <laughs> it is a it is a bone in a tendon, so it's a bone in the tendon of flexocarpial naris, which comes up on that um, side of your wrist. And so it's a little P-shaped bone, and it's called the P-shaped bone, the pisiform bone, which mm-hmm. means P-shaped, actually. Um, and then it's attached by ligaments into the other bones of the wrist. So it shouldn't really move around too much. It does in this um, hand and it does it, it does in my left hand and yeah. it does it on my right hand. And for all you people it. who are sitting here, I'm uh, I'm, I'm naked right now. If you're, if you're just, if you're you should watch this yeah. podcast. I'm standing naked showing all my bones in it's all their naked. glory. Yeah. Fine specimen, fine specimen. <laughs> is, is yeah, if, you, if, you, if you look at my stomach, Alice w- would call it, not interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so is there a ballpark in how many muscles we have? Or is there? No, she said two thirty. Two thirty. And again, it's a. Oh, it's I'm a, sorry. I'm sorry. Muscles are even no, harder, was, actually, than than bones bad. because um, oh, bones are generally elements which kind of come apart from each other um, yeah. quite easily. Muscles are not really. Uh, so as you're dissecting the human body, some muscles will come apart. It's like you know, what do you do with quadriceps? Is quadriceps four muscles or one muscle? I would it's say got four heads, four quads. But then it's got, but then it's got one insertion into the into the tibia. It's really tricky. Um, deltoid, which looks like a kind of fairly consistent block of muscle over the shoulder, but when you dissect it, you find that it's all um, separate leaves all coming together. So all kind of um, fibers coming together. So it looks like actually a whole cluster of muscles that have merged together. So I think it's a nonsensical question. Sorry about that. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, well, is the strongest muscle a nonsensical question or do we have that? Well, I think, again, you're probably, I mean, gluteus maximus is um, the biggest mm. muscle in the body and extremely strong. So your big bum muscle, gluteus yeah. maximus. Gluteus maximus. Um, <laughs> so when you're, si- when you're sitting down and when you go to stand up, you've obviously got to raise all your body weight yeah. off the ground. And you do that by extending your hip and it's gluteus maximus that's doing that. And it also Son of the back the muscle, father of the thigh <laughs> muscle, and I will have my revenge in this life or the next. I am, yeah. I am the ass. <laughs> I feel like I get oh. all my strength to stand up by groaning mm. every time. I'm like, Ugh. Yeah. turned into that person. Yeah. At, what, at what age? Just I'm asking for someone else. At what age do you start rocking back and forth <laughs> to get off the sofa? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, I get, I get I'm, I find The only thing um, about getting older and kind of ha- having all these kind of aches and pains is that as an anatomist, I take some small satisfaction out of knowing what I've done. So I, I tore a calf muscle uh, a couple of years ago and I was like, it went, it went pop. And I was like, oh, medial head of gastronomius. <laughs> And then, um, and then the other day I was getting, I went for a run and I came back and I was like, oh, I've got a really painful hip. And I was going, oh, that must be tensor fascia lata. Oh, you, yeah. you, you, yeah. you, you must do that all day with people. Like, do you ever have arguments <laughs> with people and go, there's something wrong in your cranium. You deserve a kick in the gluteus maximus. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, my my mom was an, an occupational therapist, and she took a lot of anatomy, and, and she would do that same thing. She'd always like identify what I'd be like. Oh, my shoulder. I'm like, all right, mom. I don't need to know the exact name. <laughs> I got, I, I'm just going. I, I look. Uh, I live in America. My healthcare's run out because of uh, you know uh, we haven't been working because the TV hasn't the industry hasn't been open. So this podcast is the only way I get medical help. <laughs> um, so, so I've got. I've got arthritis, right? And it's been on set. And I, I wake up and my hands sort of clawed over like that. And then I got to do like, I got to do finger sort of crunches like that. What, can you explain what arthritis is? Like the people just tell me I have it, but I don't quite know what it is. And, it, and is that a type of thing to do with an No, I did my PhD in arthritis at the shoulder joint, but oh, unfortunately perfect. I did it in medieval skeletons. So um, I have psoriatic, they tell yeah. me, psoriatic. Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. So um, that is, it's a type of arthritis that's not osteoarthritis. Um, so it's a little bit like rheumatoid arthritis, but it's not rheumatoid arthritis either. But I mean, arthritis, the arthro bit just means joint and the itis bit means inflammation. Mm. So it basically means a, a, a pathology of the joints and inflammation of the joints. And the most common one is, is osteoarthritis and everybody gets osteoarthritis as you get older. It's kind of almost inevitable. Mm. Um, you can kind of stave it off by keeping fit and making sure that you've got good muscles Other around options? your joints. <laughs> <laughs> Other options? <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're screwed. No, because I got told that psoriatic arthritis has to do with psoriasis and the the skin and the, that working into the joints. And I was like, and I get psoriasis, so it's like, uh, what are you, you going to do? It is linked to psoriasis. And they yeah. said it was in my blood, and I've had it my whole life, and it's just it's now it's coming. But there's probably things I could do to avoid it. But yeah, like she said, keeping fit, eating for well. Another day. <laughs> <laughs> Eating well, keeping fit. But it is, I mean, a lot of it is about these, you know, these kind of design flaws in the human body, which I was quite interested that you picked up on because um, because I'm kind of obsessed with this. And and when um, I have I have battles with creationists online, and I kind of point out to them how badly badly put together the human body is, and that if you were a divine being, you wouldn't design it the way it is. It's badly designed. I mean, it is you know, you were talking about the um, the female vagina and the uh, and the yeah. anus being too close. Or the male together. vagina. <laughs> I, I don't differentiate. It's just uh, and you know, and and also that whole kind of sharing of tubes, which I must say is a bit rich coming from a man, because you know, you have whole tubes that are used for both your reproductive system and your urinary system. Yeah. So yeah, the but that urethra in a man. Me. That's just one less thing to clean. <laughs> 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 Oh dear. But the breathing yeah. eating uh, is a bad system. The breathing and eating out of the oh, same. Oh, it's terrible. Who, so I did, a, I did a program for the BBC a few years ago where the, the um, one of the directors of the Science Museum in London said, you know, you've always said how the human body is so badly designed. I want to challenge you to redesign it. So we did a program for BBC Four uh, called, I think it was called Perfect Body, or in the end it ended up being called... Uh, can science make my body perfect? They always change the titles of things just before it goes to goes on air. And I was like, can science make my body perfect? It sounds like it's some kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, kind of uh, plastic surgery. Like a weight show. loss thing. Yeah. In the end, really they just weird. called it Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but actually confusing. what we did, I worked with a fantastic artist, a couple of fantastic artists, and we, and we 3D scanned my body. I didn't realize we were going to start with my body to begin with, but we 3D scanned my body and then completely redesigned it. So I had kind of like ostrich legs, which are good for running. Um, I... I talked to the, I talked to the producers about what I wanted to do about female um, reproductive system because I said it is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you know we are these apes that have um, you know we come from a we come from a, a family of of mammals that actually has it quite easy as far as childbirth is concerned. Most of the other apes are, are, are pretty much sorted as far as childbirth is concerned. And then we've developed these ridiculously huge heads, and our babies have ridiculously huge heads. And then trying you know the baby's head is pretty much 10 centimeters in diameter and the pelvic outlet is 10 centimeters in diameter, just a little bit bigger, just a little yeah. bit bigger. Yeah. And it's just like, that's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous thing. Um, so it be I good thought to that go I, to an egg system where we sit on the eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Or so, so when I talked to the producers about it, they said, well, you know, what do you want to fix there? Maybe make the pelvis slightly wider and the, you know, say that the baby's head would be slightly smaller. And I said, no, go radical, go marsupial. Mm. I mean, they've got it sorted. Pouches. Honestly. You want a pouch. But, so exciting. Yeah. Well, summary, uh, hatch, you give birth like to something the size of a jelly bean. <laughs> yeah. And then you stick it in a pouch. I mean, it's just brilliant. Stick it in a pouch brilliant, and then it would just system. duck its head up. You just have yeah. you, you have the pouch in your stomach, would you? Yeah, I think so. And you you know, you wouldn't need a sling then, you know, you keep on carrying the baby around in it. 
Because you wouldn't need you wouldn't need the belly button because we'd cease to be having umbilical cords. So that would just be all yeah. pouch area. That'd be all pouch. Yeah, and you wouldn't have you wouldn't have boobs either. So my redesigned oh, right, me. Let's not bloody <laughs> change oh. things too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're onto something good with a pouch, and now it's like I, got, <laughs> I was thinking about sitting in a woman's pouch and then ducking my head up and putting <laughs> sucking on a titty and then going back into the pouch no, again. No, oh, the teats are down there in the pouch. Oh, yeah. no, I don't want that. But what about the breathing? <laughs> it was so weird. The, the finished sculpture was so completely freaky and they kind of unveiled it for me at the science museum. They'd also, we'd also got bigger eyes and I had these pointy <laughs> ears, slightly kind of directional ears and everything. Yeah. And um, But apart from that, there was this kind of spooky similarity to me. And my husband was there at the science museum the night it was uh, unveiled and the producer went up to him afterwards and said, oh, you know, when it's going, this exhibition in, this, in the science museum and after that, we'll send it home to you. And my husband was like, I never want to see it again. I never, <laughs> ever. He didn't like the ostrich legs on you? He didn't like the ostrich? Oh, no, no. Oh, golly. I, yeah, I would go more of a kangaroo system. If you're going to have the pouch, I would have a jumping rather than a running thing. I think it'd be good if you're like you're in a bar and you have kangaroo legs and you jump up over to a woman, bounce, 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 and you go, "How are you doing? Oh, can I look in your pouch?" No, lovely system. <laughs> and and a blowhole. We need a blowhole. Well, Forrest is obsessed with with giving blowholes because he doesn't like the ear throat hole. But isn't there a danger you could get dust in it or something? What you need is like a blowhole with like a bit of mesh over it or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like filter a system. Yeah. Yeah. Where's, Where's a mask? You filter it every you need month. That stuff that goes over the top of your speakers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really tricky though because the um we I thought about that because this whole the whole kind of idea that you basically put food in this hole yeah. and then air goes in this hole and then the two passages cross over Stupid. and that is where the what the pharynx is so the pharynx is um the passageway that goes down behind the larynx and then turns into the esophagus um and the esophagus is your is the is the tube part of the digestive system that can te- connects to your stomach so the the conundrum i was trying to work out with an ent surgeon friend of mine was how to separate those two tubes and we kind of got some way you know just kind of sketching it and and working it out and then he went hang on a minute Hang on a minute. What about the uh, the the liter of uh, of mucus that's coming up from your lungs every day? And I'm like, oh, because the lungs have got this self cleaning mechanism, which is quite clever. So mm. they produce mucus, and then there are little tiny cells with um, tiny little hairs on them that waft the mucus up to the back of your throat, and you're constantly swallowing the mucus that's come out, up out of your lungs. Mm. So if you separated the digestive system and the respiratory system. There would be like this, you know, a, a liter of mucus just coming out. Right. Well, you need that. You'd have to make another hole there if you made the pipes Let's different. Have another yeah, hole. Yeah, another yeah hole. you see. Or, and then you just. Or, oh. or, or, just like the, or, or the penis could triple up. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> my, my, my solution. You could be in charge of mucus as well. <laughs> my so solution bad. is you don't even eat with your mouth. You eat rectally. So you just shove everything up your butt, and then oh. then everything gets absorbed that way, and you poop it back out the butt. People would eat yeah. less. <laughs> Obesity problems. Would you have solved. taste buds in your butt, though? I mean, no, you don't, no, we don't even want it. Just no. shove it up there. Don't be silly, <laughs> yeah, Alice. Yeah, yeah. And would you wouldn't be you, t- taste buds. <laughs> Dinner dates would be so awkward. Yeah. Oh like, no, dinner dates would be more fun. <laughs> I think you could, I think you could get to sex a lot faster. Yeah. Here comes the airplane. It was so romantic. He fed me my hot dogs. Yeah, if, if, if you were laying on your back shoving food up your ass, I think you know, she's probably up for it. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, oh, let's bleh. see here. We did the inte- we were doing the veins and the arteries. Oh yeah, cardiovascular. Oh, a lot, yeah. Um, veins and, and arteries. Tendons. Yes, yeah, stretchy bits at the end of muscles. Um, respiratory oh, yeah. systems are pretty good. The dangly bit at the back of your, the punching bag at the back of your throat is the uvula. Um, yeah. Sorry to hear about the nodules. Oh, yeah. uh, I've written there. Oh, she takes um, good notes. I've, yeah. I've, I've had you, them. Yeah. Right, I've had them twice. I had, <laughs> no- I had yeah. nodules back in the day when you couldn't speak for like a month afterwards, and oh. now they do it very like they do it with like a laser. I think now the second time I had them, they, but they, the first time they cut them off with just a scalpel, they shoved up my nose and ran what? down. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. They put a camera up your nose and they put it down. Uh, has a little thing inside the tube and the yeah, cuts up. and then the tube. But they just yeah. had to scrape them off, and you had to wait for them to heal back up. And oh golly, oh, I couldn't. Geez. I couldn't. Ow. I could. Ow. It's when I decided to become a stand-up comedian. I couldn't talk forever, and I was watching a bit of stand-up comedy, and I thought to myself, I think I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was... There you go. So yeah, I mean, cardiovascular system. You're right. Totally spot on. And 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 also, what's impressive is that you worked it out from first principles. So rather than having to learn things by rote, you you worked out that, 
you know, if you cut an artery, it spurts blood out, so it must be carrying blood away from the heart. So, yeah, good. And good deductive reasoning. Yeah. Capillaries are teeny tiny things. Um, yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah I'm well, good dude, uh, so I, I, all these, I like these questions where we ask how long everything is, but we don't. We're not going to know this either. How many? If you put all the blood vessels, how long? He said twenty meters. Is that another one where you're like going to tell me? It's always. I have different. no idea, and I also don't know anybody uh, who would have actually done that. The, the, the intestine, the intestine. Those guys that dissected the criminals. I figured they would stretch them all out. So <laughs> the intestines two two meters though, right? I got that right. Or did I say six, six, meters, six meters? Six meters. Six yeah, meters. Yeah. Um, they're, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they are long and also they're very variable um, from person to person. So you have a you have a longer section of small intestine. I'm not quite sure what the lower colon is. That was an interesting one. There's an ascending colon, a uh, transverse colon. Uh, oh, this, yeah. this, this is a running theme on the show. The lower colon <laughs> is the bit of my lower colon, colon that hangs outside my asshole. <laughs> 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 With it, uh, he says we don't need a spleen. He said, we don't need a spleen, need spleen prostate, well, gallbladder, get rid of a spleen, but you, <laughs> you have to be on, um, you have to be on antibiotics for life because the spleen's actually quite an important part of your immune system. Oh. So oh. what about the um, gallbladder? It's kind of useful. Yeah. The gallbladder, you can definitely live without because all the gallbladder does is store bile. So bile is what your, um, bile's like washing up liquid um, and it emulsifies fats in your, in your intestines. Oh. So it starts to break fat down. And your liver makes the bile and it just makes it all the time. It's just constantly making bile and then it stores it in the, in the gallbladder. And when you have a meal, the gallbladder empties itself into the duodenum and that starts to break the fat down. So you can live without it. You just have to be careful not to have big fatty meals. Would, would you um, say the gallbladder is the most useless of all the, uh, of the organs, the gallbladder? Or which, which, is there well, one, it's all context dependent, is isn't there it? One I mean, there's a lot useless. of your organs that you aren't using at the moment sitting the appendix. there. Appendix. Uh, <laughs> the appendix, that's a shit one, right? That one's no good. The appendix is pretty rubbish. I mean, it is, again, part of the immune system, and we think it's quite important early on. Um, brain is just, yeah, a big fatty lump of tissue, and, you know, it's, it, it can be trained, is, but it's, is yeah. the Is the heart overrated? <laughs> <laughs> overrated? Well, Aristotle used to think the heart was just a – he thought that basically um, – he he was well actually no the other way around Aristotle thought the brain was um, overrated he thought that the heart was the most important organ and that's probably where thinking happened and emotions happened because I mean it's quite sensible if you think about it because you know if you're if you're excited about something your heart beats faster um, and so there was this idea for a long time that the heart was where um, your thoughts and your emotions lay. And Aristotle then thought the brain was just a radiator. And does that, does, so that, much heat. does that come from people going, oh, I'm going to listen to my heart. I have to follow my heart. And then they actually did think that your heart could think. Is that where I think that- so. I think so. So I think culturally it's probably there in ancient literature, this idea that the, the heart is, is where your emotions come from. Certainly. Didn't yeah. they used to think that the brain was like a radiator? Like it pumped. Yeah. That's what pumped you just said. yeah. Oh, they yeah. did say that. Oh, I should have listened. <laughs> <laughs> Literally said it 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Um, the lymphatics. That's brilliant. You've learned it yeah. very quickly. The lim- the, I don't. I can't believe Jim got the lymphatic system correct. He said it's very lymphatic. What did you say? Yeah, uh, pretty sure of itself. About that, that's the yeah. system that's certain about things. Yeah, you're right. yeah. And, <laughs> and lymph can noids I, can, I can I become say this cancers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Noids. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, the lymph system is a really weird one. It's like a, it, it's basically an ally of the cardiovascular system. So it it kind of drains. There's a lot of a lot of fluid that comes out of blood vessels um, into the spaces between cells, and then the lymphatic system drains that fluid um, and eventually drains it back into veins. So it starts off with tiny, tiny little um, little lymph vessels that gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger, and then there's a um, a really big one that just um, drains back into um, veins around the shoulder. And, but also it's the lymph nodes are kind of part of that as well. So as the lymph, as this tissue fluid is being drained from various parts of your body, it's passing through lymph nodes, which are stacked full of white blood cells who are constantly on the alert for any, any signs of infection. So it's a kind of way of just checking that there's, you know, nothing coming into the body untoward. Okay. I've just got to say something that I've just realized. I've realized that the thing in the, in the bottom left-hand corner is now a microphone. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a larger, like, air conditioning unit oh, that was like in the background. behind her, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, wow, she's really got a big setup there or some, <laughs> some sculpture that she'd paid for, like this big thing. And then I'm like, oh, it's the microphone and it's closer. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the little purple things actually do look a little bit like a thigh master if you put them in between your thighs and, and squeeze them. Like, look, yeah. you see that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, now <laughs> that I've seen actually. a hand go up to it, I know what's happened here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here <he> comes. <laughs> um, Okay, and I think oh, the cavities versus the, yeah, what, the what, holes. Cavities are holes, right? Cavities are holes. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't include all of those holes as cavities. I don't think. Um, I they're they're kind of yeah, they are holes, uh, <laughs> canals, exit and entry points. Um, but there are cavities which are kind of sealed off, um, and and separate within the body. So yeah, there's a chest cavity. Within the chest cavity, you've got things like the pleural cavity, which is this kind of bag around the lungs which lubricates the movements of the lungs you've got another bag like that around the heart so kind of um it's, you know so the, the space inside it's actually really small it's like a kind of envelope that's then folded around the heart because the heart moves a lot as it's pumping and then in um around the intestines as well you've got the peritoneal cavity which is uh, this is another design flaw so the peritoneal cavity is completely sealed off from the outside world in a man but it's not in a woman so the, the peritoneal cavity, if you, if you go up the vagina through the uterus along the oviducts, you get out into the peritoneal cavity, mm. which is a really bad design flaw because it means that infections can track out of the female reproductive organs into the abdominal cavity. Um, female water skiers have big problems with that um, because of the amount of water that's being pushed up all the time. Um, really? And, yeah. mm. and also it means that you can have ectopic pregnancies uh, so, I mean, that is, it's one of the most bizarre design flaws of the body that the egg is ovulated out of the ovary and it has to be picked up by the oviduct to start traveling down the oviduct and then to get fertilized by sperm coming up the other way if it's a lucky egg. Mm. Um, but it can go back the other way and then go and implant in the abdominal cavity. And you just go, why aren't the ovaries inside the oviducts? Why yeah. aren't they sealed inside the oviducts? And you're preaching to the choir. It must, here. It's just a quirk. Of, <laughs> it's a quirk of evolution, I think, because there are some fish that have their ovaries sealed inside their rubber ducts. I'll tell you what, I, I feel like the human body really needs to, like, I don't like pointless things. Like, I, 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 there's a wart that comes up on my thumb that I've had to try to get cut out a thousand times, and it's just there, and they're like, well, try to freeze it. I'm going, it's not free. This thing's going to, this thing's going to outlast religion, right? <laughs> it's me on me, right? And, and it's like, so what cysts? I get cysts under my earlobes. Yeah. Is there any benefit to these things? Skin There's tags. Skin no. tag cysts. Yeah. No. <laughs> all moles and, yeah. and cold sores. Any benefit to these things just apart from being irritants? Well, a lot of those things are to do with infections, to do with viral infections. So, mm. you know, the viruses are having a nice time. Um, so I suppose as far as the viruses are concerned, you're just their, you know, you're just their ecosystem. Right. Um, but yeah, there's 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 a lot of things that are just yeah, you just think, oh, it'd be better if it wasn't there. I mean, the the nerve that supplies the larynx is one that always gets made that is just ridiculous. There's this, the, the nerve that actually supplies the muscles that supply that that produce our voice. Um, it goes down into the chest and then runs back on itself. So it, it comes off a parent nerve high up in the neck, and then it runs all the way down your neck, all the way down to the chest, loops underneath the. Um, arch the aorta on the left and underneath the subclavian artery on the right and then comes all the way back up again to innovate the larynx and it's a real pain if um, you've got surgeons doing thyroid surgery you have to be very careful um, to avoid the recurrent laryngeal nerves so it's called recurrent because it runs back on itself it recurs on itself mm. and you just go it's ridiculous why isn't the nerve just coming straight from here and going straight to the larynx and it's kind of because it gets stuck underneath his artery. When you're an embryo, your heart's right up here, stuck underneath your chin. Um, and the nerves grow out and they grow underneath these arteries and they do grow straight out uh, in the embryo. And then when the heart descends down, they all, it all gets kind of dragged down. Mm. There you go. Well, it should be able to rewire itself, surely. No. So, so the things that I've taken away from this podcast is uh, we're rubbish, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Bad design. Uh, we're, no, it's brilliant most of the time. And what was interesting about doing that um, body uh, program for BBC Four was that every time we tried to, you know, every time we kind of identified something and went, right, that's rubbish, let's fix it, we then created a knock-on problem. So it's really complicated. There's all these different systems that have to work together. Uh, and if you start tweaking one, then you find that there's a knock-on problem somewhere else. And not only that, of course, you've got a body that um, had to work as a, had to work as an embryo too. So it had to work in utero, where you're not even breathing air. 
you're getting oxygen coming in through a completely different route into the body via veins into the heart. And then it's got to be able to switch over at the moment of birth to being an air breathing animal. So some of the problems that we've got are because of our kind of life history, I suppose. And then some of them are just bits of baggage from evolution. And know, they're really difficult to write out. Do you know much about the anatomy of other animals or is, just, is humans just your expertise? But- Humans is my main expertise, but when I was teaching at Bristol University, we taught medical students and veterinary students in the same department. And so I got roped into teaching on the vet course as well. So that was that was really weird for me as a human anatomist. And uh, it's amazing how similar other animals are. It's and 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 obviously the the more closely related ones. So I've dissected chimpanzees more recently, and they're they're incredibly similar, you know, down to you know, the same, exactly the same muscles in the arms, exactly the same nerves innovating them, all of that kind of thing. But even dissecting things like dogs and pigs, it's very, very similar indeed. Mm. And then and, and then obviously the further you go away in the family tree of life on the planet, the, the, the more different <laughs> what, the what, what animal do you reckon is the best put together? There you go. Oh, yeah, that one. oh that's a really good question. Because um, you were saying I mean, earlier again, that, I think that, that, that the monkeys feels... could give birth a lot easier than we can. And yeah, they, you know, so... yeah. I think amongst the mammals, the marsupials have got it. I mean, I, I wish humans had evolved from marsupials. I think that would have been brilliant. We're, um, we're not? So we're, if, we, oh, no, we're not. No, no, no. Of no. course, I fucking, we're, we're, we're primates. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the manatee, but I always remember this because I we used to do necropsies on manatees um, in the, my, my previous job. I was a biologist, don't worry. We weren't just doing that. I was going to say, what was that? <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I'll tell a story in a second. And, uh, and their bones, though, because they had to buoyancy compensate in the water, their bones, they didn't have any bone marrow, so that, or I think almost all their bones didn't, so they were, like, really uh, dense, but they're also brittle, which makes them very susceptible to getting hit by boats, and that's why that when they get hit by boats, they die a lot, so. That's all I know about manatee. It's <laughs> it's fu- it's funny that like yeah like like Forrest is a marine biologist and he's really intelligent. Just the other the other day, I was having my hot water system um, fixed. Uh, it wasn't giving me hot water, and so the, pl- <laughs> the 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 plumber came out and he opened it up, and, and we we're standing there with our masks in the garage, looking at the open hot water. And he was about to tell me, "You see this fan here or something, right?" I was going, "Okay, right." And he he looked he looked at me and honestly asked me this question. Uh, do you have a background in engineering or science? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I, I thought I might lie for a second. I was going to go, sure. Because <laughs> I thought that might cut some money off. Because <laughs> if I say no, then he's going to, he just rubbed his hands together like, ah, well, well you're, you're missing a flugel binder up here in the top corner. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So this is a part of the show, Dinner Party Facts, where we ask our guests to give our listeners and viewers some interesting or little known facts or just anything in that realm. And uh, I think you have some of those, right, Professor Robert? Yeah. I mean, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is one of them, actually, but we've already done that. But another one um, that we've kind of touched on is the ear hole. So the ear hole, which is the external auditory meatus, if you're an anatomist, is inherited from uh, one of your fishy ancestors, because obviously if you go back far enough in time, about 500 million years ago, then your great, 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 great grandma was a fish. Um, and fish don't have ears. I don't know if you've noticed that fish don't have ears. Mm. Uh, fish don't have ears. Um, they, they detect vibrations in water through a completely different system. So um, when animals started moving onto the land, uh, when we get the first tetrapods emerging, they basically had to, cobble together something that would allow them to detect sound waves in air. And when I say they had to do it, you know, it's just happening through mutations. That's how, that's how evolution works. But what turned into the um, external auditory meters was actually um, an original gill slit. So your external auditory meters is the remnant of a gill slit in a very, very ancient fishy ancestor. And not only that, other bits of the gills then get recycled into all sorts of other things too. Um, so you obviously have to invent, um, lungs. So you you have to have an outpouching of the, of the gut, which is Mm. why the larynx is attached to the pharynx. And we have this association between those two tubes and the annoyance of food going down the wrong way sometimes. Um, and the, the cartilage that supports the airway is cartilage that in your ancient fishy ancestors would have been cartilages supporting gills. Um, so the, the larynx cartilage and the muscles that I'm using to talk to you with now 
our muscles that in your ancient fishy ancestors would have opened and closed. Ancient their fishy, wow. yeah, great, great, yeah. great, 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 great. I didn't great know grandma. that. That's funny because my, uh, my actual grandmother does smell like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Proof. Uh. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Well, if like I said earlier, please go to alice-roberts.co.uk. It's her website, and you can check out all of her books on there. The Complete Human Body, The Incredible Human Journey, Tamed, Ten Species That Changed Our World, The Incredible Unlikeliness of Being, the new book that I did not mention in the <gasps> notes here. I'm sorry. What yeah, is it again? Yeah, ancestors out in May. So all about all about a prehistory of Britain through through burials. Mm. Oh. And, yeah, and you can find her on Twitter at the Alice Roberts. And the first the pin tweet you have here is your BBC Radio Four series that you just mentioned before too. That I'm sure you want to yes. listen to yeah. as well. And that, can you listen to that on podcast as well, or is it just a, like for people in America? I think it's just it's just going out at the moment on BBC Radio Four, but I'm sure it will be available as a podcast. Yeah. Okay, great. We'll watch out for that. Yeah, please. Uh, very. I mean, like I said at the beginning, we could talk for years about this. We're not. Gonna, we're just rushing oh, the surface. I, I think I learned everything. I think I'm ready to start lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Not like, a, not like at a top university, yeah. like community <laughs> college. No, like not like the University of Phoenix. Uh, like, <laughs> like an actual university that's in Phoenix. I yeah, could okay, do. Okay, Shakespeare yeah. Community Theater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well. All right. If you're ever in an alleyway, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and a homeless person comes up to you and goes, "You know, there's only 230 bones in the human body." Okay, well, I don't know about that. It's all different, you see. We have cartilage. And then you just ramble on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.